Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to use the Create Mod add-on, Create Railway Navigator. If you don't know what Create Railway Navigator is, it is an add-on to the Create Mod aimed to add further customization and functionality to Create Mod trains. Before we begin, please make sure to like and subscribe if you find this tutorial useful. It really helps out the channel a lot. And without further ado, let's get started. To begin using the mod, you first need to get yourself the advanced display, which comes in different shapes and sizes. When you first place down an advanced display, it will always show out of service. This is completely normal and you do not need to worry. To configure the board, you'll need to use a create mod wrench and right-clicking will make this GUI pop up. The first box is where you select the display type. Below each of these will have a um, light blue description of what it generally does. And the first one we'll look at is static text. For static text, you can choose between simple text and rich text. The difference is that rich text allows you to have more customization. All the boards can be selected to be double-sided, and if you select that, you'll see the stuff on both sides. So, if you click down into advanced settings, you'll see that simple text is quite simple. We have a font color, a background color, as well as the word you want to display, which is quite self-explanatory. But if we scroll to rich text, you now see a lot more customization. Down here, we first have an X position and a Y position. And then you can choose between left aligned, center, or the right aligned. Center usually does the job. And over here, we have minimum X scale, X scale, as well as Y scale. These are to configure how big the words are. So for example, if I reduce the minimum X scale to 40, and I'll also make the X scale to 40%, and I'll also decrease the Y scale to 40%, you see that now the word hello world is a lot smaller than when we started. When you turn the word smaller, this is where the Y position comes handy because now you can change to have different rows of word. And the way you do that is after you have hello world, you want to click on this little arrow next to the one out of 50 for new line of word. Here we'll just say test, and now, if we also change this to a scale of 40, this the text word is have the Y position of 2.5 pixels, while hello world will have 0 pixels. So what this will do is that you see they start at different lines. Now, this kind of overlapped, so we might want to increase this by a couple more pixels. And now there we go. You can now have two lines of text by using rich text. And after the scales, we have a width. Um, usually, you want to just keep this as default as they are generally alright. And the final one is a label background color. This is slightly different to font color and background color. The difference is that font color and background color affects the entire board, no matter which line of text you're using. However, the labeled background color only affects the line of word that you're currently editing. So for example, if I give a yellow background color to hello world, you see that it only affects hello world and not test. And that is static text. Next up, we'll now look at platform displays. So simply right click your advanced display board and choose platform display. Under platform display, you can choose between scrolling text, focused or table. We'll first look at focused. After selecting it, it'll turn blank. And if you have a nearby um, advanced display board that you want it to connect to, Simply also choose the exact same um, type and it will automatically 
um, connect the two boards together into one bigger display. Now let's look at the advanced settings. Once again, we have font color as well as background color. Then we have time display, which you can choose between absolute and estimated time of arrival. Absolute shows the real time of day inside Minecraft, and the estimated time will show the real life seconds remaining until the time until the train arrives. Personally, I like estimated time of arrival simply because you actually know what time the train arrives. Because if you just look at Minecraft time, you don't really know what when it actually comes. After that, below you have configuration for the different width components of the display board. Usually keeping these to the default will be fine unless your board is too small. Then in that case, you might want to um, alter these values to better suit your display board. Next, we have where to show arrival of trains. Now, if it, this is a platform display, I really don't know why you wouldn't show the arrival of trains. So just keep this selected. And below we have show train color. This will require further configuration and config stuff, which I'll show in a different video. But if you want to show train line color, like the tube or underground around the world, then select this box. And when you have got your train line configured, they'll automatically show up on your board. You notice that after you do everything, you still don't see any information except following trains. This is because you need to use a display link to link the board to the station. So simply get a display link, right click any block on the advanced display board. You can be it can be any corners or middle, it doesn't really matter. After you selected it, come to your station and just place it on any side of the station. Now Right click your display link and you want to choose advanced display, the other two will not work. So you want to choose advanced displays and just keep it as component one and everything else as default and you'll be good to go. And with that, your information will show up on the display board. If you have a newly assembled train and you just recently gave it a new schedule, you will have to wait for the train to complete one complete cycle of the entire schedule before it will load up onto the board. So don't be scared if you don't see anything on the board or even though your train is running. You need to wait until it has one complete cycle. So the next one we'll look at is scrolling text. This one is a lot more simpler. And the only thing you can see is um, that what you can change is the time display as well as the text. The reason is that this board will not will only work as one row. So even if I have a second one, it will not sh connect together. So the scrolling text is designed for only one row at a time. So yeah, it's only for one row. And if we once again connect the board to the station and select advanced display, you see it's now scrolling all the information. I don't really like this one personally, but just because the scrolling text scrolls a little quick. And if you're just walking by in your Minecraft world, you probably won't be able to read it in time before the text goes out of the display board. But anyway, we'll now look at the final one, which is table. So once again, you'll need to select both of them. So now you see the board once again combined for the table mode. If we look into the advanced settings, we'll once again see the font color, background color, as well as time display. And we'll also have the width configuration. Once again, leave it as default if for most of the time. And you see one extra column which is show time and date. This mean this is just simply saying this time thing on the top, 
which will allow your um, players to see the, the time of day even in Minecraft um, without using any ex other block will just show up here. This one is probably more useful if you're selecting absolute um, for your time display. So once you've got it configured, right click it with a display link and link it to your station. Choose advanced display and you'll see that it will show your next train and the time will be below all of the selections. And that is platform display. So far all the display boards are placed on a just in the station. But there's actually a couple ones that you can place on a train. So let's look at those now. The first thing you want to do is disassemble your train. This is important so you can actually place in the block. So if we just put this board over here onto the train, we can now select train destination or passenger information. These, the top two types are for train specifically, and it won't work if you place it outside just on a random block. It must be on the train. For train destination, it mostly show where the train is going. It's mostly like the outside label on the train. And for passenger information, it's more like the display you see inside your underground tube where you say, oh, the next station is blah, 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 and you can do blah, blah, blah. We'll first look at train destination. And for train destination, we once again have a couple of types. We have detailed, compact, and extended. We'll first look at detailed. Below, we'll see in advanced settings, you'll see that uh, firstly it has a carriage index. This will display which cart or like which bogey the train is currently on. Then we once again have show train line color. And we also have do, the show do not board text. This will show when a train completes a full cycle of their um, designated train line. This will once again require more um, of the config similar to the train line color that you need to do. But you can, if you don't like it showing do not board, then you can just unselect it. And this will be how it looks. So you see the train cart on the top right, and on all of these different displays, it'll show like the train name, where it's going, and stuff like that. Once again, this will only show when the train is running and actually moving. And you also need to make sure that it completes a complete cycle of the train schedule before anything will be showed. So don't worry if you don't see anything, even when the train is first moving. You need to wait until it f completes a full cycle. Then let's look at Compact. Compact basically have the same configuration. We'll once again need the train to be moving to actually see it in motion. But if I come here and this one, let's choose Extended and we'll once again like these all have the same configuration, they just simply show different information. Now for this to work, we'll need to get some super glue and glue all of these displays to the train. There we go. And now if I assemble the train, I can give the schedule and I'll allow it to run for a complete cycle. Then we'll see how it looks on the train. And there we go. If I do a quick tick freeze, we'll be able to actually see what's happening here. So, the first one on the very top is extended. You'll see this is the purple train and the destination and the different stops it'll pass by before arriving at its final destination. If you do have a train line, it will replace the train name, which is the purple train, and just replace it with the train line. And if you have the color enabled, then it'll also highlight this word. The one below is the detailed one, and you'll see it'll show your purple, your train name or your train line, your cart, um, where it starts, where it ends, and all the station in between. 
and the one finally at the bottom is your compact and you can see that because we show the do not board text it says do not board because it is complete it is at the end of its loop so if we just unselect this we'll probably see a bit more there we go it'll say purple train and simply just where it's going so these are all the three different types you can choose for train destination now we'll take a look at passenger information once again if you pl you're placing down the boards freshly you need to disassemble your train and stuff like that but otherwise you could just assemble it and you can still edit it while the train is assembled so now we'll choose passenger information and for passenger information, we have detail with schedule as well as scrolling text, so we'll look at each of them in detail. Firstly, detailed with schedule. Once again, your color and you now once again will be able to see there's a time display. This will tell the passenger how long until the train arrives at the next station. So you can choose between them. I like estimated time of arrival. Below we have a couple more different options you can choose to show your passenger. We first have show train stats, which includes how fast the train is going, which could be interesting information to show your passengers. We have show exit direction. This one will show which side of the train will you depart from. This one works because of your the doors that open from your station. And then we also have show next connections, which will show all the other trains that will be arriving at the same station. It could be quite useful where you see, oh, if I get off at this stop, I can take the next train to a different area that the current train will not go to. Then once again, we have train light color as well as the do not board text. We also have the train car index similar to the train destination one with the detailed one and you can once again do the exact same thing to configure which car your train is currently at and finally you have a train text component which you can show train name only destination only or all personally playing with this mod i like to see more information from my display board it just feels very cool seeing all the information so I usually choose all for this option. And now we'll also take a look at scrolling text. Scrolling text also have a similar amount of stuff, but this one is a lot simpler without a couple other options. So you won't see any connections or stuff like that. But you will see show time and date. So now I can just give my place a schedule and it'll do a complete loop and we'll see how the board looks. Alright, after one complete loop, you'll see that the display is now currently working. So, I will just tick freeze and we'll see the stuff. So you see on the top, we have the one that is more detailed. you see that it will show when it will arrive at different stations, as well as the time. And the one below, it, since it's scrolling, is just saying what station it's currently at. Now this board will change depending on where the train is. So currently it's at the stations, which means it will show this information. But when the train is moving, it will show some different information. So if I just tick unfreeze, we'll let the train go around. And now you see that on the top, because we choose show train stats, you actually see how quick the train is moving currently. For well, the scrolling text, you'll see just very simple, it says next stop and where it's going. And that's all for passenger information. That is all we got time for today's video. In the next video, I'll be looking at departure board, train line color, and every other configuration to make your train experience better. If you don't want to miss that, make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any questions about this mod, leave it down in the comments and I'll try to answer them the best I can. And with that said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye now.